The is is not tool is a very powerful tool that we use for a number of scenarios, one of which is defining difficult problems and the other is for finding root cause. So today we'll look at using the is is not to help define a problem. And we would use this at, at typically when we've got very complex problems, when perhaps we've got poor understanding of the problem or we've got conflicting reports of, uh, of the problem itself. Maybe there are sporadic appearances of the problem or it's hard to articulate or isolate or otherwise understand. When we just don't know what the problem is, the is is not is an excellent tool. So just uh, initially a couple of high level notes. Uh, notice down the left hand side here we've got who, what, where, when, why, and how the typical 5Y and 1H type questions and then across the top we've got what the problem is and uh, what the problem is not or what else it might be but it is not and then an area here for some more information. So in each of these uh, cells there's a question and the idea is to try and answer as many of these as we can and again it's, it's to try and frame what we know about the problem so that we can get a better under understanding of the problem. So for example, just uh, starting at the beginning here, who reported the problem? Well, perhaps it was customer A and B, and who did not report the problem? Maybe customer C. And now that might be significant for any number of reasons, but right at the moment we're just trying to get a frame around or a reference of, uh, well in this case, you know, who's experiencing the problem and who's not. Next question, who is affected by the problem? So it's one thing to have reported it, but it's another to have somebody, um, maybe a list of customers who have been affected by it. So who's affected by the problem? And then who is not affected by the problem? What is the product ID or reference number? This is uh, in, an internal number, um, or it could be a customer reference number, but generally it is what, what product ID are we talking about or what service are we talking about? What IDs or reference numbers are not affected? You know, maybe they're, uh, part of, it, this one is part of a family, and it's seemingly th the problem should be extended to the family, but it doesn't seem to be for some reason. Uh, maybe we put that in here. Uh, wh what is uh, the defect, or what is the, the, the you know, the, the problem itself, and what is not the defect? Uh, where does the problem occur, and where is it not occurring, but could? Uh, or, or maybe should, or seemingly it ought to, but it's not. Where was the problem first observed and where else might it occur? Just because we haven't had full reports of a problem yet doesn't mean that it, uh, it won't appear somewhere else at another customer perhaps. When was the problem first reported and when was the problem not reported? When was the problem last reported and uh, when might it reappear? Uh, why is this a problem? So why is it a problem? And then why is it not a problem? And now that same may, may seem a little bit strange, but uh, not all reported issues are a problem per se. It could be just a general uh, complaint by a customer that's not happy with something, but uh, in fact it's not a problem with the product or the service. Why should this be fixed now? Uh, why is this problem urgent? Maybe the issue is seasonal and we've got, uh, you know, maybe a whole year to fix the problem, so it's not urgent right now, although we need to get it fixed, but it might not be urgent right now. Uh, how often is the problem observed and how often is it not observed? This could be talking about history. I'll just scroll down here a little bit. Could be talking about history. Um, how is the problem measured and how accurate is this measurement? So who, who's measuring it and how, is, uh, how accurate is that? Do we know and can we quantify the extent uh, to which the problem is occurring? And although we're not talking about measurement system analysis here, it certainly does uh, give us uh, an opportunity to think through uh, the extent of the problem and how we know it's uh, of the magnitude that uh, is being reported. And then down here in the other column is can the uh, problem be isolated or replicated? Is there a trend and has the problem occurred previously? So this is a little bit of history. Uh, what else do we know about the problem that might help us better understand what the problem is? Certainly we want, we want to know the scope of the problem. So who is the customer? What was the incident date and maybe the part number or the part ID that was involved? Um, what is the start of the, uh, of the process or the product 
and what is the end of the process or product that uh, it seems would include the part number uh, that is under investigation here. And then if it's known the lot number or the batch number, a die lot number, uh, we would put that here and the application that the product is used in. Uh, this might be referring more specifically to an industrial application. And then do we know what the failure rate is? And of course that again too is what the historical failure rate is. Any other miscellaneous information that seems to uh, be part of this problem would be uh, noted here. And then based on all of that, um, describe the problem and or the opportunity. And so now we've asked perhaps uh, two to three dozen type questions trying to get a better understanding of uh, what customers are involved, what customers are not involved, um, to what extent the problem exists, uh, to what extent it doesn't exist, but seemingly it should exist and this sort of thing, okay? So uh, th through answering the, the uh, two to three dozen type questions here and then some other miscellaneous information, there, we make an attempt now to try and better describe what the problem is and my personal experience is this is a very, very good tool in helping to make what I would call sense out of nonsense. All of the reporting that's done and the emotion that sometimes is involved in, in problems is all very good, but sometimes not so, uh, imp so important in trying to describe the problem. And I can't em emphasize enough the importance of clearly specifying, articulating, and detailing the, the known problem because that is going to set the direction of your improvement, your process improvement, or your project. Having a clear understanding of what the problem is. And the is is not tool is very, very good for that. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we would typically only use this for complex problems or ones problems that have are not clearly understood or uh, are not well articulated, not well documented perhaps, and um, maybe not well isolated. But highly encourage you to get to know the is-is-not tool. It's, uh, it's an excellent tool. And that's it for this video, and uh, thanks for watching.